I witnessed, recorded, and produced these videotapes of the Washington, D.C. hearing. Their authenticity is above question. This is a hearing about the government licensing the electrocution of people to cause grand mall seizures. This is produced as part of the ongoing work on the website, the way, the truth, and the life dot net. Think of the millions of dollars taxpayers' money spent to pay psychiatrists and their supporters and for the worldwide travel in putting this conference together, while the victims and opponents had to pay their own way. If I can have the next slide, we can quickly look at the comparison of ECT versus modern the oxidative inhibitors, and it's uh, quite overwhelming in terms of the trials published. The ECT has been superior every time, except one notable exception for bilingual. And uh, it's interesting because when we use a modest dose of uh, phenylcycline, which is uh, marketed as parnate, but also he used a neuroleptic drug in small doses, uh, trichloroperidine in combination. And in fact, his results were slightly better, but not statistically significantly better than ECT, but at least equal to it, and perhaps a little better. All the other studies were overwhelmingly in favor of ECT, and many of them had to be terminated because patients were not doing, were doing so poorly on MAO inhibitors and required ECT, according to investigators. Now, one of the one of the issues here is that these studies are old studies, and the dosage of MAO inhibitors may have been inadequate. And uh, I find in my own practice that many ECT resistant patients will respond to high dose monoamine oxidase inhibitors. And I think that should be kept in mind that these studies are dated and that we're using that the doses are in some cases conservative doses. Although doses still within the FDA approved range right now. Uh, if I could uh, go on now uh, to a, another, well, let's, let's just wait and have the lights, please. Uh, now, Question three is a little harder to, question one we can resolve pretty quickly. We see a we see a deficit in ECT. But the question of who should be selected for ECT and what should be the criteria for selection of a good candidate, a good patient who can get the best effect from ECT uh, has not been so elegantly answered. There are some indications, however, that in the area of delusional depression, the ECT is, is, is uh, they're overwhelmingly indicated in terms of likelihood of efficacy. And even studies comparing, and I don't have time to go into the individual studies, but comparing ECT versus tricyclics plus neuroleptics, even with the additional risks of neuroleptics and tardive dyskinesia, show about twice the, the outcome with the ECT uh, in, in two or three studies that were reasonably well done. One descending study by Spiker uh, finds an equal outcome but the uh, group in that study were quite young, and I'm not sure those patients were consecutively assigned to the treatment, or whether it wasn't mentioned, that, or whether more severe patients were just given ECT and not put in the study. I'm not sure about it, I can't answer the question. But most of the studies show that, that ECT is superior to uh, the combination of tricyclics and uh, neuroleptics. Now I'd like to uh, go on to the next slide, if I might. No, uh, not that slide, just one before that. One of the major issues that needs to be addressed more accurately, in my opinion, is the uh, long-term outcome after ECT. Now, uh, the, the, the studies that have, that have looked at this find relapse rates varying from 36% in a year all the way up to 69% in six months after ECT. Now that's a tremendous variance, and it doesn't sound very good, uh, even though we have a short-term superiority. And I think this really needs to be looked into in more depth. But I want to call your attention to three studies, actually four, three shown on the, on the slide here, uh, where the combination of maintenance tricyclics or MAO inhibitors uh, have been compared uh, with SIBO after ECT. And compared with those results I just gave you, we see here, there's an error here, by the way. Uh, this is a placebo here, where the 68% relapsed. There's an error on the slide. I just put that in to make sure people were looking carefully. Uh, 
Uh, you see that the, uh, the, the high percent are placebo patients who relapsed after ECT. This gives you some idea of what ECT relapse rates might be in six months <coughs> in these studies uh, in themselves without a medical medication, but only 17% relapse on tricyclines. And you can see the same effects throughout these three studies, all agreeing that about 20, the relapse rate is about 20% if uh, antidepressant maintenance level drugs are given uh, subsequent to ECT, which, which I think is a, is a drastic improvement in the long-term outcome such as we have it, such as the data that we have right now. And I think that we need to look further into this. There's a further study by Perry, uh, which, which showed we're looking at tricyclics again around this 20% figure. And uh, also, uh, so these four studies just about agree on 20% uh, relapse rate over, over six months, which is a remarkable agreement for uh, all these different types of studies done by different methods, and I think this needs to be uh, kept in mind. Uh, so I, I think that the real problem with ECT here is the, is the issue of, uh, of the long-term outcome. Now, in, ter in terms of the, uh, going back a little bit to the specific indications for ECT, there are, there are not a lot of studies that really are helpful in this. There, there's, there's some evidence that elderly patients tolerate ECT better over the depressed patients with severe depression, uh, tolerate ECT better than patients uh, who have, uh, when drugs are, when the attempt is made to treat them with antidepressant drugs. Brown and Gasper uh, public, are both published uh, papers in this direction. There's also, Gasper's uh, study shows that in patients with major risk factors such as cardiac and renal uh, failure, although the number of patients is small, only 10, uh, the patients did pretty well, elderly patients with ECT and had a good outcome, 79% improvement. So the elderly patient may be another area, and uh, Dr. Thompson's evidence showed that, that the use of ECT did not decline in this group, and that may be why, because of the fact that patients medically tolerate these treatments perhaps more than the alternative treatments that are available. Now there's a couple other areas that might be considered preferential areas for the use of ECT, although the evidence in the literature is rather sparse. Uh, one, one is the issue of patients with certain medical complications. Uh, these are anecdotal reports and there's no good statistical evidence in this area, but we shouldn't just confine our considerations to pure statistical studies because these medical complications occur in all different types. Uh, patients with severe diabetes out of control with psychotic depressions that can't be managed medically. For instance, I've seen patients like that respond nicely to ECT. Uh, patients with other problems and tolerating medications. Uh, patients with severe fluid restriction because of their failure to eat and take fluids are all good candidates for, for ECT. The other, the other category um, I'd like to mention uh, is that several studies suggest the possibility that patients who are suicidal may have both a better short-term and long-term outcome in terms of mortality rates if they're treated with ECT. This is supported by Adrian Winokur and mentioned anecdotally in several other studies. I think we should look at this because the, the evidence that we can prevent suicide in our treatments except for ECT uh, uh, is not strong at this point in terms of long-term prevention. Well, in summing up that, I'd like to just say that, that we can conclude that ECT uh, in the treatment of moderate or severe depression is certainly equal to and perhaps superior to tricyclic antidepressants and that in the only in the short term, although more long-term data is needed, but the use of uh, maintenance antidepressant drugs <coughs> seems to improve the prognosis at least long-term in terms of relapse. I think we need to look at such issues as quality, as quality of response uh, more closely in evaluating both ECT and the antidepressant drugs. And we certainly need more long-term studies that look more in depth at the patient's social adjustment beyond, beyond the system of symptomatic adjustment. And these types of studies, are, I think, these days need to be more in evidence. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.